Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about resolution again. Once again, <laughs> I know you probably all get tired of hearing about it, but it's got to be the goal. It's got to be the strategy. Resolution has got to be what we're after here. Our electronics are good. Almost any price point electronic is good. But our rooms are horrible. Absolutely horrible. And they prevent you from hearing a lot that's in the music. I know a lot of you out there don't believe that, but it's simply true. You know, it's physics. It's exaggeration and attenuation based on the dimensions of your room. Some energy will fit, some won't. I mean, that's just the easiest way to explain it. We got to do a lot of little things, but we got to do them in the correct order, okay? And the first thing we have to pick is the right size and volume to match the usage. You, you wouldn't record vocals in an auditorium. You wouldn't record drums in a closet. Those are two extreme examples, but it gives you an idea of what we have to have in terms of compatibility. Because every room usage has a certain pressure level that it interjects into the room. And the room only sees energy. So the room is going to deal with that energy regardless of source. It doesn't care. People all the time say, well, I have this speaker and that speaker and made by this manufacturer and that manufacturer. The room could care less. Only sees energy. It only sees what you give it to deal with. And it's going to deal with it based upon the laws of physics. Thank God it's, there's some predictability and consistency in that. And we have to realize that. Four walls, floor, and ceiling. Six surface areas that are causing the problem. We have to treat them all if we're concerned about resolution. Every surface area contributes about 17% to the problem. And you got to get 60 to 80% going on in order to have real resolution and real improvement in audibility, okay? Setup's critical. A long wall, short wall setup, a lot of rooms are rectangular. People set up here for some reason all the time. I don't know why. There's no reason for it because you have to look at which wall setup produces the least amount of low frequency problems. That's criteria one for setup. Usually setting up on the short wall there's more low frequency problems because the dimensions are smaller. Most long wall setups work best if you've got enough depth. So once again, you know, another half truth in the industry and people have bought into it. But your setup is determined by your room, not your choice, by the room choice, by what kind of energy, frequency and amplitude issues on that wall surface is creating the problem. Music and voice, rates and levels. We must have the proper rates and levels for music and voice. And it must be balanced throughout the whole room. It just has to be. Because our goal is resolution. We can't have unequal absorption on one side and not the other. I always tell people, if you're going to make a mistake on the left channel, make the same mistake on the right channel too, please. Because it's you got to have symmetry in everything that you do. It's best to make no mistakes, do it correctly from the beginning. Voice rates and levels critical for voice. Noise floor, all, always forgotten almost when I hear people talk to me about their rooms. They don't, haven't made any consideration for noise. noise. Lowering the noise floor in a room is so critical because it increases resolution dramatically. I think of all the factors that go into resolution, that's probably the most important, a low noise floor. And it's the one that's most overlooked. So you have to be very, very careful with this stuff. Diffusion requirements. A lot of people like diffusion. Well, I'm going to build this diffuser. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to build this diffuser, put it there. And my first question is, why? Why did you choose that diffuser? And why did you choose that particular placement in the room? Most of the time, they don't have an answer. So you have to really keep in mind all of the things that you're going to do in this room. And if your goal is resolution, you got to make sure that you're choosing the correct diffusion situation, sequence, frequency response. And you have to calculate all that. And that's all based upon distance. And each room usage has a different surface area that it likes to work with. Two-channel, front wall and the rear wall big improvement. 
Ceiling for home theater and rear wall. To, uh, mixed situations, the rear wall is often used for diffusion because they want to minimize, <coughs> excuse me, the reflection back from the rear wall. So this is, you know, kind of a step-by-step -step program to get the resolution that you require. And remember, it's step by step. Each step you take, this step here is based upon this step taken here. You can't skip steps or you'll pay for it in the end. And it won't be the strategy that you're trying to achieve. Resolution chase. We got to keep it in mind constantly. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.